This is the online lecture to accompany Chapter 5 in your textbook. I highly recommend that you read Chapter 5 because there are many important ideas, theories, concepts, and examples that I simply don't have time to address during the lecture. You can stop, pause, and replay this recording as often as you wish. Okay, let's finish Chapter 5. Now, in the last part of this lecture, I talked about finding a topic, narrowing it down, coming up with a specific purpose statement that helps to refine what it is that you want the audience to know about your topic. We're going to move on to something equally important. Uh, that would be the central idea. Now, the central idea actually further refines and sharpens the specific purpose statement. It's a concise statement of what the speaker expects to say in the speech. So it's a, got a little bit different function than the specific purpose statement. So when you say, well, why do I need both a specific purpose statement and a central idea? It's because they play different roles in speech creation. The specific purpose helps you narrow down the topic and decide what you want the audience to know about it. And the central idea goes further than that and um, it encapsulates the main points that you're going to develop in the body of the speech. Now, the central idea doesn't often just spring into your mind as easily as a specific purpose does. And in fact, it might not be finalized until you're well into the speech, but you have to keep it in mind because it is really critical in playing a role in deciding what your main points are going to be. So uh, the example that I used in the last part of this lecture, which was gardening in the desert, and the specific purpose statement was to inform the audience about some tips for successful gardening in the desert. Well, that's not as specific as I need to be to go into detail in the body of my speech about how to successfully garden in the desert. So I might need to do a little bit of research and come up with what it is that I'm going to actually say in the speech. And that's going to bring me to my central idea. So as you can see here, the central idea may end up being, in order to successfully garden in the desert, you have to understand the types of plants that grow well here, when to plant them, and how to water them. So what I've got are three main ideas that I'm going to go into detail about in the body of the speech that are going to end up being the three main points of my speech. So that has come out of my knowledge and my research about this particular topic. So as I say, it may not immediately spring to mind unless you really know a lot about your topic in the first place. So don't worry if a central idea doesn't immediately come to you, but it is a part of the speech creation process. Now, the guidelines for central ideas are similar to specific purpose statements, except where a specific purpose statement needs to be a, a full infinitive phrase. A central idea needs to be a full sentence, not a question, a statement. So make sure that you're not asking a question as your central idea. You can certainly ask questions of the audience in the speech itself, but when you're creating the outline of the speech, you need to create the central idea and express it as a statement. Don't be vague. Try to be as clear as you can possibly be. Don't be too vague, don't be too general, because now you're further sharpening, refining, and crystallizing the ideas that are going to be defined in the body of the speech. Here's an example. Now, I call this a working outline. This is not a complete sentence outline by any means, but it's kind of a starting point for starting to put together and go into detail on what your speech is going to be about. So, for instance, instance, I've kind of gone on to a little bit different topic here, uh, the topic of weeds. So if that's my topic, then my specific purpose statement might be to inform my audience about the three most common types of weeds found in southern Nevada. Now, from that point, unless I really know my weeds, I probably wouldn't be able to come up with a central idea 
um, or main points at this particular juncture once I figured out my specific purpose statement. But after I do a little bit of research, I'm going to figure out what these general types of weeds are. So then I can come up with a central idea. Although there are many kinds of weeds found in Southern Nevada, they generally fall into one of three categories, noxious, invasive, and nuisance. Now, like I said, until I do some research, I'm probably not going to know that. But that nicely lends itself to having three main points in the body of my speech, one dealing with noxious weeds, what those are, one dealing with invasive weeds and what those are, and one dealing with nuisance weeds and what those are. So then in the body of the speech, I can go into detail, be very informative, teach my audience about weeds, things that they didn't know beforehand, which is the whole idea of an informative speech. So that's an example of what you're working towards. All right, so now you know how to find a topic, how to narrow it down and create a specific purpose statement and work towards finding out what your central idea is going to be and eventually your main points. This is the end of the lecture on Chapter 5. Please close this window and open Chapter 6.